Hey y'all, you just missed the uh, alert with the, the dogs, the little one's always a little bit late behind, but uh, Sissy was on patrol out in the back pasture and did a little yelp and there comes Bo, so they're on the trail of something, probably a possum or an armadillo. Good Wednesday to you, it's been another pretty day here in East Texas, I, uh, of course I work today, folks, uh, feeding animals and things right on getting ready for spring so a lot of seeds today sure feels good to know a little bit more about some of the garden stuff through practical experience this is a hay bale garden or straw bale i uh thought i'd give it a shot going small of course going big over there but this little patch of ground i've tilled up <clears throat> i guess two years now and just not done well i don't know if it's that old pine tree or just kind of a fungus in the soil so i'd heard a little trick about some hay bale gardening and i'm on day three of conditioning the bales it's a inoculation if you would of uh, put some high nitrogen fertilizer and water and getting all that bacteria and organisms working in the bale but uh, kind of a neat project we'll see how it goes i've uh, i've got faith in it but as with anything new i'm a little bit suspect so We'll see. About 10 days from having them ready and then put a little pot and soil on the top and grow whatever they say. I'll probably do some of the lower crops like herbs, maybe some strawberries, but I can already tell you the strawberries ain't gonna last long with those guys. I tried that over there by the house and mm -mm. plenty of pine straw mulched it up and they love that. So between dirt baths and pecking at the straw and the few little old strawberries that were on it, having those for a treat, I didn't get much out of it. So I may not do strawberries out there. But uh, we're getting ready to plant. Pretty sure we are done with the frost or the heavy freezes anyway. I think it was KTRE today that said this marks the last average day for a hard frost. No, last year it came on the 28th of March in this area. Got a little light frost. And uh, those that are old school know about an Easter snap. Easter a little early this year, but um, I just, I don't know. I, the weather pattern this year, I don't believe we're going to get a hard one. But uh, everything's good on the place. I got a blue egg today, or pale blue. That means one of my Americanas has come of age and is starting to lay. I think 32 was our count for the evening. I uh, set on a few along the way, but it's not that hard to give it away. I am proud of some accomplishments we've made this week. I've still got some shoring up to do, but anxiously awaiting the, the turkeys and the baby goats. And look there, we got a fence in play. Still need a few more T posts and some areas, but uh, it's gonna gonna be good. And uh, look at all that junk, all out of that old crib, kitchen sinks and old fans. And I found a well, I can't get to it right now. Yeah, I'll have to save that for another video. It's an old ice uh, insert, I guess. There were those, I don't know if it was stainless steel. It wasn't stainless. There were those metal, like, levers that you'd put in a flat pan. Some of y'all will remember. And you'd pour water in there. When it came time to get ice out, you'd pull that lever up, and the, the metal would come out, and you'd have your ice behind. <laughs> so that was kind of a cool find. Took me back a little bit. This would be the turkey pen. I went ahead and mowed it once. Of course, that first growth didn't got a whole lot of nutritional value in it anyway. Learned that from my cattle ranchers that I do business with. But uh, that second growth will be good enough for them turkeys, I imagine. We uh, just prepping and getting ready for spring. Speaking of preparation, of course, all in the news is this pandemic. and I'm not going to really give my thoughts about it. I mean, it's bad, as bad as it can be. But... Uh, I heard a little antidote about, uh, <laughs> this still cracks me up to think about this scenario. Old DPS trooper, I guess it was northeast Texas, probably up around Athens, somewhere along there, pulled over a elderly lady. She's going a little bit over the speed limit, nothing tragic, but just pulling her over to kind of talk with her about it. Walked up, looked at her license, registration, and noticed she had a concealed handgun stamp on her license. So he kind of looked at it odd being that she was a little older and said ma'am do you have a a gun here in the car with this concealed handgun license I said, yes sir i do 
Oh, really? Where's it at? Well, I got a 44 there in the glove box. That kind of shocked him to have such a big caliber in there. He said, really? He said, all you carry? She said, no, sir. I got a nine millimeter right here in the console. Well, now he's getting curious and pretty much tickled. He said, wow, that's two guns. Is that all you got? She said, oh, no. I got a little 38 in my purse. Well, that did it. He, he almost lost it. He said, well, my goodness, man. What in the world are you so afraid of that you've got to carry three guns? And she looked at him and smiled. She said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> so she was prepared for the worst, right? Had three shots at whatever. Now this thing's uh, getting out of control. It uh, reminded me of the saying, I forget the Latin name of it. Thought I'd remember it, but I won't. But kind of ironic since it's a medical crisis of sorts, and it is. The... Uh, it's buried in the Hippocratic Oath. All my medical friends will already know it. I learned it way back in a different context. Do no harm. Don't overreact. Right? Sometimes things have a way of working themselves out and just basic common sense and prudence will get you through it. Good buddy of mine, still good friends, talked to him the other day. He lives on the East Coast now. Lived in Texas when we met. Did some service projects together behind the scenes, nothing flamboyant, but we did make a difference. But I used to get tickled at him. He would tell me that I had the world's worst knee jerk, something would happen, some tragedy, whatever would happen around. Man, we gotta get something done. We gotta get out there and he said, everybody's got to do something disease. And he's right. Sometimes we gotta slow down and back up, let things happen and work out the way they're intended to be. We get our muddy mess hands in the middle of it and come out of mess. So our Facebooks are blowing up. I think the president speaks tonight. But uh, we do have a world in turmoil and in crisis. But we'll get through it. These old trees have seen it all, hadn't they? I know that one has. That kind of grounds me when I start thinking and worrying. I still hadn't figured out what the toilet paper thing is. But whatever. I got woods. I was joking with Dad this afternoon when he called, and of course it's serious and not making light of it, but uh, I don't think he, <laughs> he didn't quite catch my humor. I said, you know what, Dad, I reckon if it gets bad, I'll just move into an old house in the country and get me some dogs and chickens and start farming and raising eggs in a garden. Oh. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to stop all this publicity if it gets that bad, won't I? people be running me over trying to get this produce It'll be all right there's enough to go around right but sometimes in the the heat of the the darkness we've got to be that extra candle that kind of brings sense to things make people smile folks are scared it sure be rough living in the big city right now but uh, do no harm right let's think about that do you need 50 rolls of toilet paper? Doubt it. This will come and this will pass. There'll be some fallout from it. It'll be bad along the way. It's affecting some folks' lives pretty heavy right now. Hated that about the Houston Livestock Show. I get it, but there's a lot of kids down there. Hopefully, I think uh, a Red Brother scholarships will still play out. But, uh, anyway, don't want to make it negative. We've got uh, life to live. And uh, we roll with the punches, don't we? Look, them two don't even know anything about the coronavirus. And that's been in a dog vaccine for 15, 20 years, probably. But, Bo, you ain't worried about it, are you? I uh, hate to be bold and bring down catastrophe. I may be the next to get it. Who knows? But I'll tell you one thing, it shows up on this old place and gets past all this dirt under my fingernails and chicken poop and garden and dogs. I don't think it will. <laughs> It'll turn tail and run. But if it does, we'll get the right treatment, go through it, and we'll be all right. Yeah. It's fragile how, how uh, it's funny how fragile our economy seems to be, and, and I get it. Just need to follow prudent advice, that's all. Good Lord, I didn't want to talk about coronavirus. I'm tired of hearing about it. Just do the right thing. It's spring. I know that. I'm ready to plant.
I've uh, debated back and forth whether I'm going to hand set these 180 foot rows or, or let my buddy down the road, Miller, come down with his uh, tractor and set them. I think I'm going to be smart and do that because it's one thing to be pure. I know I can do it if I had to. If I have to, I'll do it. But uh, fine line between uh, ignorance and stupidity or whatever. If I was ignorant of not knowing I had the tool, that's one thing. But to have the tool and be stupid not to use it, wouldn't it? I've hand tilled it all, but I think I'm going to let him come set these rows. Uh, the gentleman he has working his farm, we go, we call him brother, affectionately. And uh, I don't know, I may not need to be here when he sets them, because I'll be pretty, uh, pretty strict on the straightness of those rows. Knowing me, I'll be out here with the hoe, refixing them. Nah, I won't. They run a good operation down there. That's who I go to for my gardening advice, too. That, uh, that man's done it. And can't speak good English, but boy, he can sure plant a garden and tell you how to do it and what the moon's doing and when to do it. So that's how we learn, isn't it? I'm blessed to have that as a resource. So we'll be putting peas and corn and peppers and eggplants and all kind of good stuff for long. Well, dogs are happy. Fresh dirt. I think I've talked enough for the evening. Y'all take away one thing this evening, do no harm. Okay, let's, uh, whether it be on Facebook or in public, try to be that extra little candle in all this madness. We'll get through it. We always do. Been through worse times as a people. The difference is if we stick together or not, right? I think that's the whole thing. Yeah, that is the whole thing. Sticking together. Let me do a quick roll call. I'm going to get off here sunset. It's going to be dark pretty quick. Let's go back a little bit. All right. There's uh, Miss Jerry. How are you, ma'am? Good to see you on. Miss Leticia saying howdy. Y'all check off. Well, let me turn around. Look at that old horseshoe right there. I don't guess it, it's probably safe to touch that, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, happy hump day from North Car Northern California. Hey, Mike, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, Carrie Worthington saying howdy. There's Sharon from Corpus Christi, Texas. How are you? David Barton, keep us posted on the hay bale. Yep. Um, I actually started doing a little YouTube I mean, I'm recording videos of the daily progress. There's not a whole lot to it at the beginning. But uh, I may patch all those together and do it. I'm kind of excited about it. It's kind of a cool concept. Um, if you had to buy the hay, though, I'm afraid you'd go broke. It'd be cheaper to till. A gallon, a gallon of gas is a lot cheaper than a bale of hay. But uh, in some urban areas, I think it'd work real well where you don't want to have, or where you can't till up the yard, or the soil's not the best, or it's, it's rocky. Um, Maybe you can find a farmer that's already got some decomposing bales to use. But uh, I've seen a lot of pictures, and there's a controversy about straw versus hay. And I'm using what I got, as usual. And uh, we'll see how it works out. I'm kind of excited about it. I'll keep you informed. Um, let's see here. Uh, Kenneth saying howdy. There's Donna Cox saying howdy. Pecan trees to bloom out for planting. You know what? That's right. I've been looking at mine every day. And they're starting to bud, but you're right. That is the last sign of spring in your area. Or at least it tells you that the frosts are over with. When that pecan tree blooms, that's a, that's a surefire way to tell that you're safe from a frost. Got another customer that saves coffee cans. And I don't know if I've got enough coffee cans to do this garden, but on your sensitive crops, if they've already sprouted and are on their way when you get a, a uh, frost, she goes out and put coffee cans on all of them. That's a lot of coffee. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> that works though. Uh, there's Janine saying howdy. Patricia's saying hello. Gina Norris, ice trays. You know what, I've got, I'm have got. i gonna walk across, the, it's up here in the pasture. I gotta, I gotta get it. I was mowing yesterday and saw it. I'm like, man, look at that. And this, that's another thing. Living on this place reminds me how uh, there's bad times came and went. And uh, not to be a hoarder, but uh, I got so many glass jars and stuff that I, and, and what's funny, those of you that have followed the journey, I'll walk by something a million times and think it's junk, and then one day I'll be needing it, and I'm like, you know what, I saw that up there in the old barn, and it's got a use again, but uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. I started going through this old junk pile that's that boy, it's an eyesore, and getting it, let me see if I can find this old ice tray, this is going to bring back some memories if I can't. It's not the whole tray, it's just the insert. 
I should have picked it up. There it is. Right by that old, here you go, that old Chevy head. Look at that. That come from a different time, didn't it? Look at there. Who knows how? <laughs> well, there's not a whole lot of people knows what this, what that does. I wish I had the tray. Oh, there we go. The tray that it went in. So the way it worked, for those that don't know, let me see if I can get it. There was a metal tray that it rested in. You filled it up with water and let it freeze. Then when you're ready for the ice, you pop it loose, and there you go. How about that? I think I'll take that in the house. All right? Pretty neat. I bet that's made many a glass of ice cold sweet tea right there. Y'all reckon? <laughs> ice used to be a premium. Sure did. That's back when you had typewriters. Uh, don't, some of y'all don't even know what that is. Most of you do. All right, let me finish out here. There's Gene. Brian, Deb. Gobble, gobble. It won't be long. That's right. Everybody's getting it right. There's Miss Misty. How are you, ma'am? Uh, Maria saying howdy. She's going, or she's at work. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say your name. No, Maria's not on here, boss. Just so y'all know. Hope I covered for you there. There's Andrea from Arizona. Nicole, how are you? <laughs> Carrie's, uh, Carrie's with us. And let's see who else we got. Cheryl Swain. Thank you. I'm trying to keep up. Nicole from Katy, Texas. Thanks for checking in. There's Kenneth Cantrell, Brian Deb Long, and Doris, my good friend down in Lot, Texas. Judy, uh, my old dad's mind was working. He'd say it's time to break out the corn cobs. <laughs> I thought about that the other day. I got some old, I think there's an old Sears catalog in that cannon shed. And I've got a two hole outhouse. And, uh, Somebody finally explained that to me. I, get, I, I used to think, why in the world would two people go in there? I think, and not to be graphic, but we're from the country, so y'all understand biology and dynamics. I think they would use one for a while and let it rest, and decompose, and use the other one. I guess that's how, I, I guess, that's what I'm going with. Makes me feel better than two people sitting by each other without a... Okay, anyway, I'm done. There's Kenneth. <laughs> uh, these dogs are Anatolian Shepherd and Pyrenees Cross. That's what they are. Mr. Gillis up in Garrison, Texas, had them for the first year and a half of their life. And I lost 80 head of chickens. I was down about four by that old bobcat. Lost all those white broilers. I still hate them. I need to get me some more of those. But uh, put a call out to find some. Was willing to buy them, but uh, he said he wanted to change up and go back to cur dogs for his cattle and uh, went out there and they'd never really been socialized too much with humans, they were friendly enough, but loaded them right up, put them on the place and here we are and they love it. And I sure am grateful to him for, for sending them this way because they are some beautiful dogs and he did well with them. There's Miss Linda up in North Carolina and Andrew's checking in. For, forgot Joe's AR-14, <laughs> I'm not even gonna get started on that. If, if they make an AR-14, I guess I might, might need to get one. Maybe it's for shooting squirrels. I don't know. Jana's saying my dad was really strict about his rose. Yep, I am too. My Uncle Nathan was that way. Uh, he was my oldest uncle. He's gone now. And uh, loved Uncle Nathan. He didn't say much, but when he did, it was worth listening to. And he could work that tractor and them rows. He taught me about how to do that. We'll talk about that another time. But... Uh, I've been impressed with that wisdom because it does pay off. There's Letitia saying, God bless you, Miss Charlotte's checking in. Jay Snyder, goodness, I have went on and on tonight. There's Dominique from France. How about it, sir? Pam Neely saying howdy. Uh, okay, yeah. I guess I missed you on that trip in. You need to come by here and get some eggs. I got plenty, a lot. So come on by anytime. There's Miss Dorothy. Uh, she helped me start the rooster clan. I don't know whether to thank her or what, but no, <laughs> we're, we're doing fine. I am going to find out about that canned chicken this weekend, I imagine. We won't be doing any live video butchering, but maybe you can see the finished product. Who knows? Uh, there's Deborah saying howdy. My AP, Pat, up in uh, Pennsylvania. She's coming to see us in mid-March, and uh, I have to make sure there ain't no snakes out there. I haven't been none yet, but I'm still looking. 
They won't be alone. They won't be alive long. I promise you. Still have a double wide one of those ice trays filling. Like spring in Northwest Arkansas, planting potatoes, onions, peas, and beets. That's from Kathy. Thank you for checking in. And I believe I got everybody covered. All right. Well, it's getting dark. The lights are about. To, well, the lights have popped on. And I said it's time to do it. Y'all have a good evening. And be the light. And there I go again, leaving stuff all over the place. I said I was gonna take that ice. That's not an ice tray. What would you call that? The ice popper outer, maybe? Yeah, that's what we'll go with. Aluminum, that's what it is. Couldn't think of it. That's It's gotta be aluminum. That one ain't going to the recycling bin, I promise you. Y'all have a good evening. Remember, do no harm. It'll pay off in the end. Be the light, make somebody smile. Talk to you later. And leave the toilet paper alone. You don't need that much, do you? See you.